Hello and welcome to this tutorial on how to set up Google Play Services for Android with Cocos 2DX. First thing you want to do is go to the Google Play Developer Console and sign in. We're going to create some test achievements and leaderboards uh, so we can put them in our application. So once you signed in, you want to go to the game services on your left and add a new game. Don't worry about the linking apps. We are going to uh, come back to this uh, console later. So enter the name of your game and what category it is. And hit continue. and here you can add achievements and leaderboards and events and yeah again don't worry about linked apps so I'm going to add an achievement so you can add names you can make it incremental, hidden revealed and choose how much it's worth incremental just you know if you collect 50 stars So I'm going to save and add just a regular one as well. Right, and once done that, uh, you'll notice it has application IDs. You're going to want to make a note of them because we will be using them in the code. Next, just going to add a leaderboard. Again, this will generate an ID for the leaderboard. Make a note of it because you're going to want to put it in your code. Once you're happy with your achievements and leaderboards, uh, make a note of your app ID at the top. And again, all your achievements and leaderboard IDs. Once you've done this, the next thing we're going to want to do is to download the helper classes, which was made by a user, uh, C. Pinyan. I'll put the link in the description. Uh, basically, these just help go from Cocos 2DX and do native Java calls. So if you just download the zip, and once you downloaded it, uh, extract to the files. Extract the zip. Once you've extracted, you should have a folder like this. If you go into it and into the project Android and then source you'll have two things we're interested in com uh, utils don't worry about the one above it and then google example games and you want to put these in your android uh, project android source folder so the easy way to do this is just to copy the com folder into your project android source folder I've already done this and uh, you can see on my project they're all imported and the next thing you want to do is then add in the class files so you can call these functions which is native utils and JNI helpers and just copy them into your classes folder and you see I've done that and once you've done that don't forget to uh, add it into your android.mk otherwise it won't compile so now we've done that, we're going to get the Google Play Services uh, library and you're going to want to go to the SDK Manager at the top of Eclipse and if you scroll all the way down there will be a section called Extras and if Google Play Services is not tick, tick it and install it once that's installed we are going to be importing it and it downloads to your 
wherever your Android SDK is, your Android folder, uh, and then the folder called Extras. So you're going to click File, Import, Existing Code, and then browse to your Android folder. Mine is in development, Android, and then you've got SDK, Extras, Google, Google Play Services, Lib Project, Google Play Services, Lib, and then hit OK. And click Finish, and that will import that project. And we're going to add that to our project by right clicking on your project and go to Properties. and at the bottom hit add and you should see google play services Lib. and after this next thing you want is the jar file so we go to the java build path add jars and go to google play services and then bin and the jar file should be there and on order and export just tick the google play services lib Next we're going to add the required um, required code needed for the Android manifest to let you use these Google Play services. So if you open up your manifest, I'll put this code in the forum post or in the description so you can just copy it. You just want to copy that into your manifest and it will moan about at string forward slash google play game app id because you haven't defined that yet but we'll be doing that in the next step and apart from those definitions you're going to want to add the internet um, permission as well and I've added it at the bottom of this file There's the internet permission. So once you've done this, you're going to go to resources folder and then values and then strings XML. And I'll put these strings in a forum post or on description as well. These strings, the bottom strings, are just strings that help you debug when you can't uh, connect to Google Play services and then. Your Google Play Game App ID is the app ID you should have got from the Google Developer Console. So just make sure that's in. That's your app ID. Um, yeah. So just save your strings, and that should be fine. Then we just need to modify some of the source files. So we're going to go to source. And then com Carlos Pinyan Utils, and then we're going to go to actually first we're going to go to our app activity. So it, you want to include the import for com Carlos Pinyan Utils Util activity, and instead of extending a cocos to the activity, extend a util activity. Okay, so next we're going to go into native utils and you see the original import is com carlos pinyan google play services dot r we changed it to input our package name so you need to change it to your package name uh, dot r so if you don't know what your package name is it should be at the top of your androids manifest dot xml So next we're going to add our achievements and the leaderboards IDs if you have them. We've just got achievement IDs for this project. So I've got the client ID and application IDs at the top. Uh, I think they're for setting up on the iOS side. So when you come to do iOS, you'll probably need to add them in. Um, and yeah, we just defined our achievement strings. Um, just to make life easier and keep them all in one place just add your strings add all your IDs and then you can use them just by including well, whatever you've named the definition file so 
signing in so if you're going to sign in you might want to do it on the splash scene you would need to include native utils at top and then you would do something like if native utils quote unquote, is not signed in then sign in and then if you go to native utils header you can see all the functions you can call so is signed in sign in sign out you can submit a score with your leaderboard id and then the score you can unlock an achievement by passing through the achievement id you can increment an achievement so if you have an achievement that's like you have to uh, break 50 bricks you'd pass through how many steps or how many how many bricks they've broken and then once you hit the required amount it'll automatically unlock and then show achievements, show leaderboards you might want to use and show leader a specific leaderboard you'd probably use them on like when you click a button show achievements that's pretty much it apart from usage, usage again it's fairly simple just you probably check if you're signed in and then just do native utils colon colon unlock achievement or submit score whatever you're doing really uh, so an example would be if we got an achievement for breaking a brick we would go to where we detect a brick is broken Jeez, in brick manager so again it include native utils at the top and <coughs> ignore the achievement stuff above it it's just a different way of doing it uh, you could just do native utils unlock achievements and then pass through which achievement you want to unlock and then a, you probably want to do a check to make sure you're signed in before you try and unlock achievement So you just do if native utils is signed in and then unlock the achievement and that's pretty much it for usage um, next we're just gonna do the final steps on the google develop console once you're happy with the app you want to file and export it and sign it with your uh, key and you're gonna make sure that is that's gonna be the application you're gonna upload to the google store so if you add the application, if you already added it, just go to your APK, upload it under alpha or beta or production if you've already released it. I do alpha first for testing because you don't have to release it to test. Uh, so after up, up, upload your APK there, I've already uploaded mine. So then go back to game services and click on the game service that you created earlier. Then go to linked apps and click on Android and then type it, self tightening your package name it will find all your apps from uh, in your accounts and you just link it with it and click save and continue and then you'll come to this page and you click authorize your app now and just literally click continue and uh, create client and it's as simple as that really And if you go back to linked apps, it should show your app is linked. Yeah. And then finally, you go to testing and just make sure everybody's email you want to be able to test is added to the testers because you won't be able to sign in otherwise. And a quick note on when you're testing, make sure you install the APK you've exported and not running it from Eclipse because the Eclipse running it from Eclipse will install a debug version and it won't allow you to sign in because of mismatch of keys. So hopefully you found this helpful. Uh, thanks for watching.